as you've already heard, my name's Sean Douglas. I'm the director of Extraordinaire Digital Media, and I'm the creator and the presenter of the Codpast. So about this time, let's just say a few years ago, I just received my GCSE grades, and I opened the envelope, and I saw an F, and I saw a G, and I saw what looked like the chords to a Beatles song rather than what looked like any academic achievement. Um, so, what does a guy who got F's in English do doing what I do today? So when I got F's, people said, there's no point you learning to write or read or spell. Doing a job that involves those kind of things is not for you. You should just do something, you know, do something vocational. Um, my job today involves writing scripts, reading technical documents, and where my spelling is not just scrutinised by my teachers, you know, ready to write red ink over, they're uh, scrutinised by company directors, communications teams, and the most scary people of all, not teachers, but internet trolls. <laughs> so how did I get to this point? Well, somehow, without being diagnosed, I got through college and university and ended up with a H&D in professional broadcasting. And then I got a job as a news cameraman for a Chinese organisation, later moved on to the BBC, and then throughout my career worked for communications companies, PR companies, and set up my own small video production company. After that, I became a video editor in an international bank for their TV studio. Now, when I got there, editing was a very small part of what I did. What I actually did was reading difficult banking documents and writing scripts and taking down minutes of detailed meetings that I went to. All things that filled me with fear because the last time I was doing those things I was at school and I was failing at those things. But luckily in the bank they gave me the freedom and the flexibility to implement all of those little workarounds that we all have to, to get through the difficult things and although it was tough and challenging I excelled and I was, I was great at my job. A few years later, I moved to another production company and things couldn't have been more different. So at the bank, I was producing big video productions and organising crews going to Hong Kong and India and managing budgets and, you know, sticking to really tight deadlines. At this new place, I couldn't get to do any producing and that was the thing I was good at. What happened at this place was production and video production came with masses and masses of complicated paperwork which had even more complicated filing structures, where the information to put into those complicated documents was just illogical. So I was employed to do something that I was good at, which was being a video producer, but made to do something that I was bad at, which was dealing with paperwork, which is pretty counterproductive. So a few months after working there, I was pulled into the manager's office, and he said, you know what, your work's slow, your work's laboured, and the only thing you have going for you is that yeah, you're a nice guy. And he was right, because I'm a really nice guy. No, no. <laughs> the other stuff was just a load of non-true stuff. Um, so this was a pretty crushing blow, because throughout my career, people had said, Sean, he does great work. I love the stuff that he does. And, you know, I thought I'd beat dyslexia. You know, I thought I was in a fight, and I was like, come on, man, dyslexia, what are you going to do? So this text was like, okay, okay, I'm leaving you, I'm leaving you. But dyslexia hadn't quite gone. He was just hiding behind the bins and ready to pounce out. So it was quite crushing to know that even though I'd come so far, dyslexia still had the power, if I was in the wrong environment, to have such a detrimental effect on the way that I could do my job. So it's pretty clear that what I needed to do was get out of that job as fast as I could. So I was just like, Usain Bolt. And, um, I started, I'd already started up a production company, so I thought, right, this is going to be my main job. I'm going to work for myself, because if I want to produce the videos that I want to produce in the way that I want to produce them, I need to do it myself. So I started my production company, and it was, it was pretty difficult. You know, there's no safety net. You can't go to your boss and go, boss, I've done something wrong. It's all on you. But it was the best decision I ever made. So a few months later, I went to 
a meetup for dyslexic entrepreneurs. So we were all down in Google campus in Shoreditch and there's about 60 of us, all dyslexic, all business owners. And we went around the room and we, we heard these stories, you know, people struggling at school and struggling at work and being motivated to go out and create their own businesses. And these stories were really motivating and inspirational. But they angered me because I thought back to when I was at school and when I was a 14 year old being kicked out of my classes, standing in the corridor, listening to my classmates doing their French verbs through a door. And I thought, well, if I had heard some of these stories before, maybe I would have had a bit more hope that life doesn't end when you open an envelope and see a load of letters on a piece of paper. I might have not got better grades, but I definitely would have had a more productive time at school. So when I got home, I went on the internet and I thought, well, I'm going to find all these stories and I'm going to put them on Facebook and put them on Twitter. And I just really couldn't find any of these inspirational stories. There was loads of stuff about actors and loads of stuff about businessmen and loads about Richard Branson. I mean, everyone knows Richard Branson's a dyslexic. But as a 14 year old sitting in my class struggling with Shakespeare's sonnets, stories about billionaire businessmen didn't really relate to me because I was here. Richard Branson's up there. How do I get to there? So I thought, well, there's nothing out there. I should put it out there. So I thought, how am I going to do this? Because I hate reading. I hate going onto the internet and papers and stuff. It just, it just bores me. But I love podcasts. Because for me, what would take me half an hour or an hour and a half to read in a newspaper, I can listen to in 15 minutes. So I thought, right, it's got to be called, it's got to be a podcast. I've got to do a podcast. And what better name for a podcast for dyslexics than the Codcast? You could see it there. It's floating about because I'm dyslexic. Um, so the podcast was born and it's basically a monthly radio show where I interview inspirational dyslexic people, but people from all walks of life. So if you listen, you may find a story about a dyslexic that's a bit like you, or, or maybe like you. And uh, that's what it started out as, but it's turned into a blog and we have videos and we have loads of contributors. And it's a place basically where dyslexics can come and be inspired, but it's also a place where non-dyslexics can come and learn how to think the dyslexic way, because we've got great ideas. I mean, if you think about it, dyslex uh, a Lexic mobile phone made by a Lexic designer, you remember those, those old plastic things where you had to press buttons and go through menus, and then a, dis a phone designed by a dyslexic, Steve Jobs, piece of glass, swipe, so much better. So I want it to be a place where they can share our ideas, learn about us, but also realise that Dyslexia is not just about letters floating about on your page. It's not just about people mixing up their B's and D's. That dyslexics are creative and talented and most importantly, competent. So, you know, you've got Isaac Newton. He did that whole gravity thing. And you've got the Wright brothers. They did something to do with planes or something like that. I don't know. And then Marilyn Monroe. I think she was in some amateur theatrics or something. And then Steve Jobs, the man with the phone. I mean, they're all pretty cool. They're all pretty dyslexic. And without them, the world would be a pretty dull place. Um, so to finish this off, talking about cool people, um, I'd like to play you the trailer from the latest episode of the Copcast with one of the coolest people that I know, one of the coolest dyslexics that I know, and some of you may know her as well. The Copcast, episode four, Chance Encounters. Jane Nelson was destined to become a writer, but short-sighted teachers... So that's the story of how the Codpast came into being. If you'd like to check out more of our content, why not enlighten your right brain at thecodpast.wordpress.com. ...junior school holding my book up and saying, that's just stupid, you spoke one word three different ways. Any English teacher...